Thank you for joining this virtual edition of BMO IFSA Toronto 2020. And I'm here with the team of Song of the Scorpions, the director, writer Anup Singh, producer Saskia, and the ever green Gold Shift Teparani. She's never aged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's she's a she's a world citizen. <laughs> so let me let me start. I I revisited the film again. I revisited the uh, song of the scorpions again today, and I remember how the film affected me so much. And I also remember that before you started your shooting, Gold Goldshifte was here in Bombay, and she played Hang in a house to all our guests, and we all <laughs> I was revisiting that video too. And you know the most. I, I realized that the film is such a the film is poetry. It's such poetry, and you see a lot of movies. And first thing that I again recalled, which I remember when I saw the film first time on the big screen, was the camera was moving constantly. There's a constant fluidity to it. It's there's a constant fluidity to it, which is what enhances the poetry of it, right? Which is which is which is become very rare in today's. Uh, cinema when you see from the world over and and let me start from that's just a surprise i just had to say it but anup knowing you you have not grown up in india you did not grow up in india you you and taking me back to the days when i was a student and i would read journal of arts and ideas and there was these conversations about tarkovsky and where it was manikal and kumar shahani and madan gopal singh and rajat kapoor and rajat i knew from theater the only name that would feature in there was Anup Singh, who I did not know. From those days, I'm saying you making a film like Song of Scorpion, with with where when did you ever discover your India that you that you make films out? Whether it's Kissa or Song of the Scorpions, where does this India come from within you? Uh, wow, that's quite a question, <laughs> Anurag. Uh, Kissa, of course, comes from the family, so there is a reason behind that. Um, uh, the Song of Scorpions, uh, it has to do with growing up in Bombay, let's say from the age of 12, 13, uh, till the age of around 24, before I left India again. And uh, I've seen things change, you know, as you have, as all of us have. And uh, there has come a time when suddenly we feel that uh, the India that we knew is uh, not the India that we know today. So in many ways, I wanted to revisit this whole question of why are we being told what it is to be an Indian today? Why are we being told that this is the only way you can be an Indian? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one of the reasons then to return was this really horrific uh, thing that has seared, I think, and will remain a kind of scar on the body of our nation, is the rape of this young woman in uh, Delhi. Yeah. The kind of uh, burning that it carried, I think we have not seen that kind of uh, national uh, sense of loss of something that we believed in completely, you know, and that is yeah. that we are not this cruel, that we are not this violent, you know. And I wanted then to enter into this whole question of violence because we are seeing a time where we see violence of all kinds all around us. But there is and a kind of a repression that India has which has surfaced, which has surfaced in today's day and age so much right. because, of, because, of, because of how everything is going towards in one direction. So right has become so right that the center has started to look like left. Yes. You know, yes. that's the India we're living in. Yes. And the repression and the misogyny has yes. surfaced with an elan right now. It's not, not even not. like apologetic anymore. Not right? So yes. what your film says is almost like a foreboding. You know, there's a sense of foreboding in your film when it begins, right in the beginning when it begins, like, you know, when, when she starts to walk out and, and to that man lying in the bed and the way everybody's reacting to it. And you see Irfan standing there and he's kind of leaning over, wanting to, I don't know, see what she's doing or wanting to hear the song that she's singing. 
you know, the sense of foreboding that it starts to create. It immediately starts to create. And it's almost like knowing that where India is heading. Yeah. When you made this film to where we are now, yeah. what is very unique to the world of Song of Scorpions is now they're in a larger proportion within within two to three years. Yeah. Much larger proportion. Yes. Yeah. Also, the thing is, you know, on Iran, if we just look at the character of Irfan for a moment, then you see that there is a surface that he plays. Yeah. And behind the surface is a totally different reality, a totally different uh, spirit. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this kind of mask of the self is again something that I wanted to deal with. With uh, the character that uh, I am, you know, eternally grateful that Gulshifti agreed to play the character yeah. of Nuran. There is something else that I wanted to carry, and that is, you know, we chose to shoot the film in the desert, in Jaisalmer. And as you know, this desert stretches to Persia. Yeah. You know, it stretches to Turkey. It stretches to Mongolia. It stretches, yeah. you know, to all those parts of the world that we are slowly trying to deny today. Yeah. And much of our culture, much of our uh, civilization, you know, has benefited so much from all these cultures. Ours have always been these deserts, these waters, these rivers that have allowed journeys. And I wanted exactly. to celebrate that journey in uh, the character of Goldshift. No, that's fair. I, I want to, I, that's a question that I had, uh, which I will come to Goldshift on that, because also uh, since Irfan is not amongst us, there and I was seeing the film and it was literally very emotional right in the beginning when you see him. You almost feel like wanting to pick the phone and call him and say like, you know, we never talked about this performance of yours. And he's in there and it's sad. So I, I wanted to come to Golshifte. This is at what stage of the film did Golshifte come in? And Golshifte, you have this incredible relationship with India. You know, you have this incredible relationship with India. I want to know like what drew you to the film? And how similar is that world of nomads, if I may call them, from the nomads of Iran that you've grown up with? Like from, from what he's talking about, how this desert extends to Persia. Because in the sense, if nobody tell, if some, if I don't know the language and somebody tell, tells me it's not India, this could be Persia. This could be very many places across the continent of Asia. So what drew you to the film? At what stage did you read the script? Well, I think... I remember um, the first thing that drew me to this movie was Anup and Irfan that I met them in Abu Dhabi Film Festival and we were showing, they were showing Kisa and we were showing uh, Patient Stone and uh, at one of the festival nights we were just joking and Anup and Atik they said okay we're gonna swap actresses let's make a movie and swap actresses and we said okay and it was just a, one of those nights in the festival yeah. and of course uh, it was the first time I was meeting Irfan and it was very Irfan's eyes I don't think anyone who met him would ever forget his eyes it was like something that um, you cannot just pass by it will catch you somehow uh, like the light light of his eyes and I was like a butterfly like a moth and uh, that passed and then finally after some time not long um, Anu contacted me and I I thought wow that festival night was a real night and uh, we are gonna do this and for me, the choices of the movies I do, they're very intuitive. Even not reading the script, I knew I'm going to be in this movie. Uh, I just read the script to know what's the story, but I knew that I'm going to be in it. Um, and then, of course, uh, the story of Nuran, um, her voice, because this voice, it's something that... Uh, we talk a lot about this, the voice these days and the breath the voice now everybody talks about i can't breathe and uh, nuran she loses her breath and i think uh, women 
throughout history, they have lost their breath, they have lost their voice, and they have to somehow search, dig, heal, uh, to somehow find it. And uh, Nuran is the perfect um, metaphor coming to life, really, uh, that finally she finds the voice that it's not only a voice, it's a, it's a healing voice, it's a melody, it's a, it's a voice that comes like a lotus that has the roots in, in dirt, in swamps, in the dirtiest water, and then finally when it comes out, it becomes the lotus flower, which is holy somehow, and this voice, this lotus flower heals, has the power uh, to heal. And um, for me also with my journey it was very symbolic because I never know sometimes if I am choosing the movies I'm acting in or the movies are choosing me and I'm just a little puppet that I'm just walking on a path that is already uh, very much clear for me. And also in my life, um, I, I had days like Nuran behind those doors uh, with no food alone, crying, uh, with some angels around, like a Kritika, that she was, she was also there. There's always some angels around that somehow take you out and they are with you and uh, they walk by your side until you reach that uh, oasis of water and that song. We found that song together. And I think we, not only women, but we men and women, we with Erfan, we all find that melody. We all find that song that can heal. Wow, I went on a lecture for myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good, but you know, it's like, also you have, you have your whole life, is, there has a kind of a parallel to it. You see, you're always uprooting yourself, starting again. You're always learning new language. You're imbibing a new culture. Your life has always been on a go. You have been a nomad in a way, like, you know, in the sense, so I want to come to the question of like, how was it? Because you have come to India so many times, but when you came to shoot and work for the first time and learning the language, learning a language, it's almost like I remember you were talking to me about how uh, when you moved to France and how the director of Persepolis and Marianne Satrapi, she taught you French. She was a French teacher, right? In initial days. And how like, you know, you... You again came and you learned Hindi and it is so convincing. You've been biting the language, you lip syncing the songs. Well, but the difference is Hindi is much easier than French. Like for me, <laughs> Hindi is so, it's Sanskrit. So, and the Persian Close is also Persian, Sanskrit yeah. based. So it's much easier. Um, and again, I think for me, language was never something that would make me afraid of not doing or do it wasn't an like, even if they would tell me it's in Russian or Chinese, I wouldn't be afraid because I would say less. Yes, it's doable because we're talking about love. We're talking about universal um, human reactions and human psychology. So it doesn't matter what language is. It's the language of the heart and we just that the rest of it is technique and hard work to somehow make it happen. But at the same time, it's a lot of pressure because if, uh, if you really want to try to make it right, you really, uh, you're basically talking phonetically. And of course you have native people sometimes looking at you like, oh my God, that really didn't sound right. And you know, it didn't sound right. So you have to really get it right. And also this, nomadic thing that you talk about i think it's again some people on this planet i believe that they are eternally exiled like we are exiled from garden of eden we are exiled no matter what we are social exiled we are people that we don't have a home in the sense of home really because we find our home in our heart we finally have to build our home within because there is no outer home out there. Um, because wherever we go, we are strangers, we are foreigners, even in our own country. I think if one day I go back to Iran, I will feel very much of a stranger. Same as I'm never French, 
I'm never Indian. I am never nothing. At the same time, I'm everything. Wherever I go, I feel everyone, they are my native people. They are my, I go to Amazon. I go to everywhere, to Japan. I feel like, wow, I know these people. I know these people because I can connect to them through my heart, but not the language and even the culture. I love their culture. I can learn, but um, also the question of Nuran is that she loses her home. She loses her grandmother. But I think in most mystic cultures, the only chance for growth is the separation. Even the birth of a child is through separating the cord from the mother. If we don't separate, we don't have the chance to be reborn. So we, the nomads of the world and the homeless people of the world, we got the chance to somehow find home. Uh, same as Nuran, that the home, she says, that was snatched away from me, but, but she finds her voice, she finds her home within. And me too, my goal shifted also. I found my home in you, in Anorak, in, in Anup, in Saskia. We are all nomads. I'm sure none of you is, is where you are born somehow. We are all somehow just with a little suitcase and walking and moving and we somehow find each other. Yeah. So I'll come to Saskia. Tell me the whole journey of the film in the sense, when did Anup <laughs> talk to you about the film? And how was it like, how long did it take to put this film together? Because, you know, in India, everybody is so obsessed with films. I think of an idea, before I have an idea or a script, I have the money. So to make it. So yeah, you're, li- you're lucky. Have the money. <laughs> yeah. so because I have the money, I have, to, I have no other option but to go and make the film. I'm saying, how is it? Like when you put a film together, sitting there, your Indian filmmaker who lives in Switzerland or France, he's still figuring out, with an actress from there, Irfan, who's always traveling, putting it all together. What, what, how long does it take and how, how, how hard it was? Well, um, I, I, I wish I had the money before and then would make the films after that. <laughs> that would really That's only possible in India. So. In India. Yeah, yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, I like I'd been, I've, you know, I've been living and working in, in Switzerland in the film industry for some time, but I never even knew that Anup Singh existed, let alone the fact that he lived in, in Geneva. And it was through actually his uh, German producer that I met in, you know, uh, through Arimage and introduced me because I was maybe going to come and in, become involved in uh, Kisa, but that didn't happen. And that was kind of a last minute uh, thing and that didn't happen. Um, but then we had a very good connection and this was around maybe 2012 and it was in the summer of 2013. So seven years ago that Anup, um, that we met and he talked to me about uh, the Song of Scorpions. And I just immediately fell in love with the story, with the message, with the, you know, even, even the locations and the, and the music and the melody and the poetry of the film. And I think by then, we, there, wasn't, there was barely a treatment. Or it was really just sort of an idea and a song that Anup had in his, in his heart and in his mind. And then, um, and then we went to, then we started, uh, we started, I think we got the first yes for fine. So the way we constructed the financing for this film, it was with uh, some mostly Swiss uh, government money and a little bit of French. So it's a Swiss French co-production. So it's an official uh, government backed film. And then we have some private uh, investors that came as well. And the first yes that we got was in, um, was in September 2014. So it just takes, it just takes time in, 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 in Europe. And I think that we, because we're uh, in an art house sort of film type industry, it's a little, it's much sl- like in, relative to India, it's just uh, a bit slow. And we went to some, we went, to, we were in the Venice co-production market. We were also in the Goa um, co-production market and uh, got some interest and, and then we were ready to go in 2000 and at the end of 2015. Oh, I, I still wish, you know, because a lot of people in India haven't seen the film. I and know. I really am, I've, been, I've been talking to people to like get this film out here so yeah. much. Well, it's, it is, um, it's, uh, I can, there is some good news that we can share is that where yeah. uh, it looks like there'll be a release in India, finally, oh. <laughs> in and a proper, like a proper, uh, 
in a proper way because it'll be in theaters um, as well because it's it's the oh, kind wow. of film because you've seen it on the big screen and you've seen it on a small screen so you see the difference yeah it's a it's beautiful really... film and i think i think people would want to watch irfan like once again because there's just so much love for him and people would love to see him one last time on yes, screen no, and no. i think it, yeah. it has to come out on screen and people get introduced to gold chitte from india like other than they only know her from uh, hollywood films and from pirate films but <laughs> yeah. not from not not from any indian film and not from any <laughs> Yeah, so we hope that's what we that's what we're working on at the moment. And you see this started 7 years ago and I'm still working on this film. It's uh it, it keeps us busy. <laughs> yeah. So I I I wrote down a lot of things in the sense like, you know, there are these moments in the movie. There is this incredible thing that I found with Gold Shifter's performance in the film. And you know, like you see the beginning of the movie, your eyes are very playful in the sense when when you see Irfan kind of following her around. and is kind of flirting with her before the jeep comes in and they beat him up and all that and after she gets violated the eyes are kind of dead and sometimes angry and then then what happens there's, there's this moment where like literally again this sense of foreboding that comes in when she's sitting in the desert and seeing noora noora and she's kind of looking at next sequence she's sitting with her husband and she says that how she's just flesh and bone and she can't find noora and after that when she finds the truth her eyes are so cold in that sequence of seduction in the desert when she looks at him her eyes are so cold that after that whatever she does i don't believe her i think the transition just in the eye and 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 anoop is just knows that is happening with you in your character and he does not let us go away from your eyes i'm saying what was that was thought through that was organic how did was that because like i've seen the film twice now and it's so incredibly done it's so beautifully done and it's so clear and consistent it's just those three different stages of a woman that you see in nuran and it's so beautifully observed can you talk about the process that you were anoop and gold shifte that whole give and take between the director and actress that process of it literally at that time you don't hear anything you just i'm just watching your eyes I think well, Anup wants to say something, and then I will talk after Anup. Um, you know, we had started auditioning the film. We were looking at uh, actors almost in the whole of North India, and uh, we were also looking at the locations at that point. So, one, I was on a recce in the desert of Jaisalmer. and it was very early in the morning i was high on a june and it was it was just an amazing piece of luck i saw a gazelle you know this gazelle must have been born just a few hours hours ago yeah. and uh, i saw it tumble out of some bushes mm. and it stood there and then it moved a little as though trying to get a balance on its leg legs and then it started you know running around all right just in circles it just kept running around in circles and then it stopped again it went into a complete stillness only its head was moving very very subtly very gently all right this is early morning and then it leapt it jumped and yeah. it fled away yeah. into the desert then when i met uh, golshifte at this film festival that she just spoke about i think that is one of the first things that struck me about her not in terms of her physicality right? yeah but in terms yeah, of the yeah. spirit that she carries yes there is something about her which is like a gazelle inside you know It's she sure, stumbles yeah. she jumps she runs you know her you know yeah, yeah. but there are moments when she goes absolutely still and that stillness is when for me and in the film is like when the whole cosmos stops no oh, that's what this very incredible thing and knowing go go shifte for so long now also because when she's frightened she's at her strongest yeah. you know 
and which is what is so think, incredible when you <laughs> hey, I please, think it's also so, um, I think it's pain and survival I think it's that basic caveman surviving mood and also sometimes pain can be that that's why pain has two sides pain can kill and pain can heal uh, it's that moment of um, jumping and dying or flying so you're just standing there and i think when sometimes you are in pain and you're just being eaten by the pain but you're not alert you don't the pain finally pushes you to an edge until i think the second part of the movie when the grandfa grandmother dies and everything goes wrong it's that the pain is pushing her pushing her pushing her but until she reaches the edge where uh, Shaoshang comes and he tells her the truth. And this is where she's standing in front of the cliff. And in that moment, everyone is still because you are really before making a decision that is gonna change your life. And that is where she decides to kill. She decides revenge and this is where the pain transformer, like the scorpion. Scorpion has that um, quality, even the month of scorpion, that the poison can heal, the poison can kill. So she chooses to kill. And that's why she becomes like this, uh, there is something in her eyes that is a bit like um, the scorpion. She becomes that scorpion until the time where the same poison can turn into into a remedy and then that becomes that darkness suddenly switches into light and uh, it's just i always say if you are this much into darkness if you reverse it you go this much into light if you're this much into darkness you go this much into light so when you are deep 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 in the darkness like that black sheep Jesus and talks about, if you switch and you go up, then you can go very much higher. All the deepest valleys, they have the highest mountains. So yes, you, the, the further back in darkness you go, the further out in the light you can come. So it's sometimes, I always think it's a chance people that they grieve so hard or they, they go in the darkness so badly that they are at the rock bottom. They have the chance because it's like an elastic thing. The more you pull it and when you release it, if you release it, yeah. some people, they love it just to Fair. be in that tension of just being pulled and never being released. But in that moment, when you decide to be released, then you go very, very far and far. she manages yeah. she, she managed to go and become the song in the desert that's an incredible way of like putting it together you know there is there these moments in the film that have that stay with me and that stayed with me the first time and that also stayed with me let this just stay with me now there's this moment where irfan when he goes and being a widower and that's when i discover in the film that he's a widower and he goes to the town, not in the village, in the town. And he's playing, playing with his children. And he says, let's play a game. And he goes and hides behind the quilts. And he hides and the kids don't come looking for him. And then he peeps up and they still don't come. And then he realizes they, they've started playing their own game just by the sound. And you stay on him. And then, then, then there is a suddenly there, he sits down. And he comes to a decision, which we never find out till much later, that how evil that turned out to be. So can you talk about that scene? It's a, I think it must be one of the most incredible scenes that I saw that stayed with me. Anurag, uh, I think there is something uh, as a seed in the film, yeah. Uh, which I was trying to share with everyone, with Saskia, with Gulshifte, with Irfan. And that was a very simple thought. And I think this thought helped us a lot. Uh, and the thought was this, that almost 
on a daily basis, you know, we, all of us, are breathing in the air which is around us. And this air is full of pollution. In our time, it is full of corruption, it is full of violence, you know. But this air is also something that gives us life. We breathe all this uh, horrible things into us, but we're also breathing in life simultaneously. And I think now when, and now when we breathe out, I think we have a choice, you know. The choice is, do we want to breathe out the same violence that we have breathed in, or do we choose to breathe out a song? And I think uh, that is really the thing that uh, Nuran's grandmother in, in the film played by Vaidaji, that is one of the principles that she's carrying. And that is the principle that she works constantly to share with uh, Gulshifte. And in time, Gulshifte's character in the film, Nuran, really internalizes that. And she can, no matter all the poison that she has had to drink, she will breathe out a song. Unfortunately, in the case of uh, the man, surrounded as he is, not only by the poison around him, and his inability to see, you know, the joy that uh, small things in life can be, like children, like his daughter, he has not had the gift, if you like, of being able to breathe out something other than violence. Yeah. And in the film, I'm trying to show that perhaps it is a certain uh, state of being that we as men have denied ourselves. That perhaps we know we have listened to our grandmothers as carefully as we have listened to our grandfathers. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's also this moment with Goshifte, like after that, after she gets violated with Shashank and she comes home and her friend has brought the food and there's this, you stay with her. You stay with her. Then she goes and she finds the food and she eats it and then she opens the door for the friend. I, that's another scene that just stayed, stays with you. You know, there's almost like, and this is true to the entire film. You know, if I look at the entire film, every single shot is revelatory. In the sense, it's you know, every single shot is designed like a suspense thing. You don't know what it is going to reveal as the camera is moving. And every shot starts to reveal something and starts to put things in perspective. Every single motion, every single thought, idea. It's almost like you're watching a Hitchcockian kind of a drama, which is not really Hitchcockian. But you know, that whole sequence, staying with her, it needs a lot of courage from a filmmaker that I'm going to stay that long with her till she comes to a decision that I'm going to go out and open this door. I'm saying, I want to talk to both of, both of you, talk about that sequence, please. Because, you know, that sequence really, for me, is one of the key turning points where really something begins. Uh -huh. shift it. Okay. <laughs> I think we all have those. I mean, I think all the humans at one point in their life, they have experienced those doors. Uh, yeah. The doors you need to close and the doors you need to go and hide. Doors that you go to cry, to die, to, to every moment you ask yourself, why are you alive? Uh, what happened? Why this has happened? All those questions, you just roll and roll in pain and darkness. And it is somehow necessary that grieving time to somehow allows you to come out. And it's funny that there's also something with food. Either you lock yourself in and eat, either you lock yourself in and you don't eat. So there's something also related very much um, to food, to nutrition, to basically this life you put inside you and either you block it, either you commit suicide with it because you don't, you can't take it. And um, 
I also, it's funny, whenever I think of Song of Scorpion, it's that scene that comes to me when I, visually, when I saw it, this is what I remember. It's very right that it's a scene that, um, I don't know, what is it? It's the camera, it's the house, the, or it's us. There's something that really, and this rhythm that is just being expanded like an elastic, non-ending, and finally it comes to this food and opening the gate somehow somehow wanting to live somehow uh stepping into the desire of coming out of the pain at least trying at least and that moment is really for me is always a glorious moment and anup g is the master of creating these moments that oh, it's, they just it's, it's incredible came. because you know it always feels like the camera is camera is there only to follow nuran and and it's not kind of uh it's not interrupting me it's just watching you and moving with you so that i can get them like i can actually feel ex things that you're feeling then uncertainty that pain, that confusion, what to do, what not to do. And the amazing thing is the director having the courage to let it take its time. You know, it never seems, that that's one sequence that did not seem like it's been designed or you're looking at your clock, let's get to the door. You know, none of those things. And that's what for me makes it so much more powerful. Because when she suddenly opens the door, I feel like, okay, she made up her mind that she's going to step out of it and do something about something, which I don't know till she asks about her mother. Yeah. Mm. Anurag, also the desert is very important. And I think, uh, yeah. uh, you know, there's something about choosing the desert and taking uh, Gulshirte and your farm into that desert. It is that when you look at the desert, it is a very strange place. It is very demanding. It can burn you. You know, however, out of the, this desert, as you know, we also have all our kissas. We have all these love legends. We have prophets who have gone into this desert, you know, yeah. who have gone in a way ready to meet God face to face or to meet death. Yeah. And in the secret of this desert somewhere, there's also water. You know? And I think each one of us makes the journey inside ourselves at some point or another that we enter that desert and we either burn you know like lovers and for that for us that's also a joy or we will find the water that will give us life again you know it is what we choose and i think the different characters in the film make different choices about what they will do when they find themselves in that desert. The character of Irfan makes certain choices. And of course, the character of uh, Nurin uh, yeah. makes different choices. And that really is for me what the film is trying all the time to talk about. Do we burn ourselves and do we burn the world around us? Or do we come back with the uh, water? You know, the most surprised I was because, you know, uh, most surprised in the film, I was like, when she, the simplest choice that Nuran makes in the film is when she decides to marry Irfan on the basis that, will you help me find your mother? That's the very, the simplest one note choice that she makes. Because every other choice is made in the film has so much complexity and layers to it. I'm saying from there on, when this this another scene that follows much later in the film where the sense of I started feeling that sense of kind of a I start, there's a sense of foreboding there's a sense of something tragic is going to happen when he tells her that I will not touch you without your consent and then gives her the knife that if I do and I in my head feel that knife is going to be used you know I know for a fact that that knife is going to be used and that foreboding is what drives everything forward. She doesn't, like, you know, really. And, and then he goes to start, it's, it's almost like he had an evil moment. He's not an evil man. He loved this woman. He felt humiliation. 
he wanted to be rid of her he had this whole evil moment which was much much larger than a moment because he's also standing outside the house and watching her humiliation and then he gets to her and she comes into his life and then suddenly it's almost like he's wanting to undo everything so which is why he gives her that knife and then goes to his friend and puts that scorpion in there but things have changed by the time he's come back and meets her she's there to receive his she, she wants to make love to him she takes his wants to have his child and then i don't know what is going on in her head because i'm so scared because the way she's looking at him just the way she's looking at him i'm saying it, the way everything is done in the film so that's why i want to talk about this is what is in your head describe how you were thinking because every character is so human and every character is so inwards but the emotions are so strong that they will carry whatever they're feeling right till the end i think it's the torment of our time anurag really we talk about it we are on social media you know and we exteriorize it as much as we can but i think deep down all of us are wounded you know and these wounds are really bleeding uh, by everything that is happening around us how do we come to terms with this you know and i wanted to look at this in the film and ask myself there are various ways of me me personally living this uh, torment living this violence how do i do it i can do this i can avenge myself you know in whatever small ways i can uh, torment other people you know, or i can bring a healing and in the film i wanted to deal with all these moments one by one you know and to see what kind of choices that people make at the same time they don't lose their humanity yeah you know, i wanted to really really keep that and that was the reason why i had to cast an actor like irfan you know or i had to cast uh, gulshifte or vaidaji for example which which was that last line you know when he says like he doesn't want the, don't tell the child about the father yes. about me yes no that that really kind of hits you because the man knows yes he's lost everything including himself and he says yeah. that yeah and is almost wanting to redeem himself yeah. by not existing for the child yeah so uh, i think it's I, it's a great gift uh, whenever uh, we have the chance to redeem ourselves when we allow ourselves to redeem ourselves it doesn't happen very often in the world that we are living in in this moment where people actually seek redemption you know mm. and certainly in politics we see that today that there is no sense of seeking a redemption there's yeah, always a sense of vengeance you know and i i'm i'm sorry that uh, uh, i hope you know every film make a hopes but we know that this is just a hope but we make films because of this hope i hope that the song will reach out and at least for a moment bring a little healing to the world that we are in today no and i i i i think i don't know how much does gol shifte know about vaida ji's and and who she is to all of us indians oh i do i did do all my research <laughs> <laughs> yes right you see the film like is, is the big g by the g uh by the g is uh, yeah and the funny thing is all of you you know a by the g that you know but i met a by the g that i i met so for me one time you were having a dinner in this hotel uh, in jazanmir and i just looked at her and i couldn't believe this woman in this age she was looking so elegant sexy young and like she was this uh, uh 
bird really that was there and I was just looking at her face in candlelight and I and that point I understood wow now I know now I know why she is the Vaidaji of India which is people they really bow and they not only bow they go on the ground in front of her and what an honor to work with her really I was the luckiest person I think in this project to be able to work with Anu, this poet that he is, Erfan, that, I mean, the fact that he's gone is one of the biggest losses of my life. And, and Vaidaji, which is uh, incredible, uh, uh, exceptional woman. And of Have course, seen any of and everyone else, all the women. Have you seen any of Vaidaji's old movie? Have you seen her dance? She Gaid, was one of the most incredible yes, dancers. Gaid. Gaid. Yeah. She was a classical dancer yeah. when she was discovered by Gurudat, who we all love. Yeah, so and much. but very like you very elegant. Like her movements is is as Beautiful. if it's a little bit oh, yeah. like Armenian or Georgian. It's a little <laughs> bit of a it's coming from another place. It's not only Indian. She has this other thing in her. It's her essence. Which is makes it so unique and exceptional. Uh, something I have to describe, Anurag, you know, and uh, yeah. this is a meeting while we were shooting between uh, Gulshifte and Vaidaji. All right. Whenever Vaidaji comes on the set, there is, of course, something very, very special about how she comes on the set. Yeah, she looks so at elegant. everyone. Yeah. She just looks at everyone, you know, yeah. and everyone feels her gaze on them. It's almost like a blessing. All right. And then when she comes, she's ready to shoot. There is no, she doesn't, she comes well prepared. She's in costume. She has her makeup on. She's ready. Okay. Then Golshifte comes and Golshifte is like this tornado that comes in onto the set. All right. <laughs> so it's not her gaze, but it's her arms on somebody, her hand on somebody else. She dances from one side to another. And then she sees why that. And then when she sees Vaidha, she says, you can hear her from miles away. Vaidha ji! And she goes running. <laughs> she actually goes running. And when she embraces her, I really think that poor old woman is going to tumble into the dunes. <laughs> you know? She embraces her with such force. And you can't imagine the joy, the real joy on Vaidha ji's face. Whenever she yeah, but that's she that's how good she pays. Yes. <laughs> so this 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 was really oh. their meeting uh, almost every other day when they were shooting. <laughs> that's, uh, what are the what are the more plans for the movie? In this is I really this is I'm dying to like what you said. It's great news that it's coming to India and things. And what are the what are more plans in this sense? What are you working on? Is Anoop making another film? Are you producing it for him? Because I can tell you one secret that me and Anoop met more than 20 years ago. I was the writer and he was the director to start. We started working on a script that never got made. Ah, so it's <laughs> waiting, waiting. That's a secret. Uh -huh. And I, I, I was a young, in my early 20s writer. And Anoop Does was trying to make it first film. <laughs> oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think I think the, I think this could be a good combination, the four of us. Yeah, um, I'm just giving it to you. Hint. Yes. <laughs> it's not me. Nobody has touched upon it. <laughs> no, where um, where I mean, Anup is always writing, and he's got several projects in different uh, directions. And um, what we're doing now with the Song of Scorpions, it's one of these, it's 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 one of these like slow, ev everlasting movies, you know. And even though the world premiere was in 2017, it's it's still in festivals. Like if if so, it's great. We're very uh, honored to be sort of showing in this virtual uh, version of the edition of the festival. So thanks to the festival there. And we're looking at a release in India, which uh, you know, unofficial. It's not a it's not an official announcement, but we are um, expecting. We are sort of uh, working towards something happening this year, and uh, France as well. So these are two major wow. territories that are, you know, close to our hearts for different reasons. And um, also, 
people who love Golshifte, who love Irfan, and who, who love this sort of poetic cinema. So I hope I hope we can make some official announcements soon. No, no, sure, sure. I'm Leo. Want to bring the film to India? You want any help from me? I'm there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and you know another very great aspect of the film which is also like so much part of both Golshifke's life which is music and Anup your life your life the music of the film it, it's just so incredible and the voices that are used this is just so incredible this is I just want to talk about the music before we like end this session this music and cinematography of the film are like two such standout aspects as well so talk about the music and the singing and it was amazing to see Gol Sifte like yes. humming and everything, yes. like getting it just right. In the sense, I, I could catch only one place where burr became ch. So only one place. <laughs> only one place. This is amazing. I, I've done mm. film as an actor in a different language and I can spot more mistakes. <laughs> in myself than I've done in you. <laughs> I still remember the songs. Yeah. I'd love to hear it. You want to sing it? Ladorani, Orani, Ladorani, Marito, Chane, 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 Chane. <laughs> well, okay. you know, music is really, I think, also part of the spirit of the film in the sense that, like the desert, you know, again, with the music, I wanted uh, my audience, you know, and in this case, I must say the audience, not only in India, but my audience everywhere, to become aware of something. And that is to realize that no matter what we think is our music, you know, this music is always a music that has come from journeys. This yeah. music is always that has come from travels, you know. And especially in the desert, it gave me a chance to do just that. So when you listen to the melodies, the melodies, uh, uh, which, uh, uh, you know, is something that uh, Madhun Gopal Singh, who wrote the lyrics, as well as uh, wrote, uh, uh, as well as composed the melodies for the song, you know, he and I, we've worked together for a very long time now. And on this film, we really wanted to come together because we both believe in this idea of journeys. So if you listen to the melodies really for what they are, you will realize that, ah, okay, you know, uh, this is um, uh, Sindhi. Of course, the community uh, that the film is set in is, is a Sindhi community. But this is a Sindhi which has something of Afghanistan in it, you know. Strangely, there's something of China in it. And I've seen this while taking the film around the world, showing it to different uh, audiences. I have uh, people come, from, uh, come up to me and say, you know, we have this melody in Kazakhstan. You know, we have this melody in Russia. You know, we it, have it's this... A, it's a, yeah. you know? Is the melody is also that I've heard in a Kusturicha film and also like, you know, it's like, is that, it's the people who, the nomads, is the, what was, what, what they call, uh, who traveled down from Romania, through yes. Iran, through Iraq, to indeed. India, indeed. and further. Indeed, indeed. And I wanted to celebrate that. I wanted to celebrate this great culture that we have in India, which is really a culture of uh, journeys. It's a multiple identity. You know, we don't have a single identity. If we look at our art, if we look at our uh, music, you know, even our classical music, we look at our dance, we look at the way we speak, even some of the words that we speak, they belong to a vast, vast region, you know? Yeah. So in a time when we are being told what our identity is, the music for me was very important to say, Listen to us, listen to our own culture, you know, just listen carefully and you will see that we are multiple. You know, yeah, we are like, the so like the song of the gypsies, you know, the gypsies tell the tales. Yeah, yeah. But it's been like so nice yeah. talking to you. I, I really genuinely feel that this film carries so much more of India than most films we make here. And I really want Indian people to see the film. Also want Indian audience to discover 
goal shift and ask who's that girl. So I'm, I'm <laughs> thank you so and much. Thank and thank you, Anurag. What a, why why aren't you not a journalist? I mean, such amazing wow wow. You like I'm just I, a thank you, Anurag. Right? Really, it was so beautiful. But everything you said, I think you were really inspiring. Thank you. Thank you.